Self editing. So this is yeah. self editing part two, and you will love self editing. See, so remember, you're, we were talking about it, yeah. and we're very, hyperventilating. I'm very, no, I'm very enthusiastic now to go home and edit my eighty five thousand word novel. Well, because you're not going word by word, are you? No, are you? Well, so, I don't know. Well, I'll wait to see what you have to say today. Well, we've already gone through seven points, and. You're looking for some key things that you mm -hmm. want to change, and that's going to make a huge difference. So, okay. So, all right. We're going to go through another another seven, and we're just going to get right to it because, again, self editing and and some people. Be, I'm not I'm not saying Jane, although probably Jane, because it's something that people either don't know how to do or don't like doing. They often avoid doing it, and here's the problem with that. I've I've actually heard writers say, especially older writers who do not understand how publishing works now, they say, well, that's what editors at the publishing houses are for. So I can just basically well, give a draft. they're going to edit it anyway, so why do I even yeah. bother? Because yeah. they, they are. But the problem with that is editing is now important for the writer to do because it's going to be probably one of the big factors in whether or not you're even going to get picked up by an agent or a publisher or an editor. So you're really going to want to present the tightest, best work that you can do. Absolutely. In fact, yeah. you, you, you have excellent grammar, you have excellent skills. Um, so you're an excellent writer, just you, but you self edit, even though you don't like it, you self edit. And then what do you do, Jane, on top of that with your manuscripts? I let other people edit it. Yeah. She actually pays people like me, for example, although you haven't done that yet. Just saying. Because I haven't self edited it yet. Okay. Just saying. Um, but, but, but people pay me or pay, there's plenty of people who do editing of full manuscripts. And Jane does that. An excellent multi-published author who's won awards and has an excellent natural ability. You cannot catch all of your own stuff. So even though nope. self-editing is crucial, it's also important to get a pass from somebody else. Okay, so we're going to go through these next seven. Okay. And the first one is one of my personal favorites because I so love this one. And this is one of my big problems. We mentioned a little bit on the, on the first uh, part of the self-editing. And that is minimize or avoid adverbs. Okay. So, so for the uneducated, what is an adverb? An adverb modifies a verb, basically. Okay. So, so she ate greedily. Exactly. Now that in that example right there, what that adverb is doing is telling us a little story. And what that story is, we don't have a strong enough verb. But she gobbled. Her exactly. Face. That was it. That would be a perfect, perfect guzzled. You know, a, a real meaty word. Um, if if you have too many ly words your verbs are just going to be weak. And you're going to, again, put that in an extra word that we talked about trying to call any word that isn't necessary. If you can say with one word, what to kind of say, it's better to use the one word. Mm -hmm. So if she walked angrily, she stomped, mm -hmm. would be a much more powerful verb. So that's, it's an easy fix. Cause you, again, you're doing your search by F for L Y search for L Y words. And some of them, again, not all, all L words, L Y words are are evil if it's being used as a noun like um, I can't even think of one now. How how horrible is that? I can't think of what it is. But if if it's if it's if it's being used to modify a verb, that's what you're looking out for. And don't do that. Right. Don't do that. And then if you choose to do one in a whole manuscript or something for effect, you have that option. But 99.99. Yeah. Your, your verbs need to be strong. Yeah. Okay. And that's, that's just powerful tight writing, which we've mm -hmm. talked about before. All right. Number nine is, is in this list um, that we've been compiling across the first episode. And this one is, it, it cracks me up and I don't know why it's avoid stage directions. I never had this problem. I have, okay. I, my name is Robin and I used L Y words way too much at the beginning of my writing career, but I never had this this one. And I'm going to give you some examples. Yeah, give me an example. She bent her arm at the elbow, lifting her hand to her mouth to muffle her scream. So that literally is stage directions. Do we need to know that she bent her arm at her elbow? How could you, if your hands are out on your side, how could you lift your hand to your mouth without bending your elbow? If it was straight, you, you, it's not possible, no. right? Okay. So 
we know that that's happening. Um, another one is her hand flew to her, oh no, this is the, the revised version. Her hand flew to her mouth, muffling her scream. So we've changed, she bent her arm at the elbow, lifting her hand to her mouth to muffle her scream to her hand flew to her mouth, muffling her scream. Totally, totally different. Totally different impact. It was not long and laborious and well, cumbersome. Because if you think about it, when you're reading that, you think lifting hand to bending yeah. elbow. Yeah. Now, if it's important, like if somebody said they were paralyzed and they couldn't, but, uh -huh. you know, we needed, you know, when, when somebody's back was turned, she lifted her hand, you know, her elbow bending slowly or whatever now that stage direction isn't a stage direction it's a clue that this character lied or something yeah. so you can use it if it if it has a, me a, a meaning but for the most part we do not need to know that her you know that her elbow bent in order to get her hand to her mouth because it will be implied and we'll right. know it and again that becomes unnecessary information so no stage directions okay and here's and here's another one that that I have to talk almost every single time to my my writers, even ones that are accomplished and published, that I work with. Those red and blue lines on your word processor, mm -hmm. they mean something. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. They're not just patriotic. Mm. The wide of the page. I thought they were just pretty. The red of the squiggles, the blue of the squiggle. No, it's not. It's not that. They actually are telling you there's a problem. And the number of people that submit writing to me in various for various reasons. And there are red squiggles so much so that it looks like somebody bled on the page before and, you even get a chance to edit. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's a, that that to me is a red flag. If I was well, I have been a judge for writing contests and and other things. But if I was a publisher or an agent and I saw somebody turn in a saturated, you know, blood red manuscript, I would think that they're they don't have attention to detail. They may, be, they may be a little lazy or maybe just don't care. They think they want somebody else to do the work. So they're, they're just not. They're, so this would be a good thing to put on your little sticky note list is mm -hmm. spell check. Because yeah. in the newer versions of Word, you do it has spelling and um, grammar. grammar. So yeah. it will let you know. And it's not always right on the grammar. No, and that's funnily enough. The, my next one is don't trust spell checks. Yeah. But we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. But, but you're right, if you see those red lines, there's a reason for it. Usually it's a misspelled word, but sometimes it's, the blue is usually grammar or mm -hmm. punctuation, um, but it's telling you something. Yeah, to, and, to just stop and, and look and consider. Yeah, so you, now you're not, again, you're not looking at your whole manuscript reading the words, now you're just scanning for any red or blue. Mm -hmm. And if you find one, address it, address it. Um, <laughs> the number 11 that I just said was don't trust spell checks. And the reason, the, the example, um, oh my gosh, this just cracks me up. But the example is she walked through the park, but the through being spelled T-H-R-E-W. Mm. So that wouldn't be kept, caught by a spell check, right. would it? No. no. There would be no red or blue lines to look at. But, so you can't just say, oh, I've run spell check. Yeah. You need to keep, pass your eyes. And, and normally there are words like through, like to. So T W O T O T O O. Well, your. How about your? Your. There are some some words, and if you know that you have made, and other people have found those words on your on in your manuscripts, so you know that those are words that it's is also a funny one. Mm -hmm. I I am like I love grammar, and I'm pretty good at it for the most part. But I will write I T apostrophe S when it is not. It is, and I so I that's on my that's on one it's of on my list. I have a list of specific things to look for. So I do all of the self-editing that I'm talking about here, but there are specific things that I do. I write the word lovely. And so, like you just you, you mentioned, that's on my list. It's mm -hmm. IT apostrophe S. I don't have to put a, I never put ITS when it should be it is. I only put IT apostrophe S when it should be ITS. Yeah. So I have that word on, and I actually just do a spell check for those. Super quick to find them, super quick to change them. I can do all of my my words that I my ly words and everything I can do that in five ten minutes for a large manuscript. So it's not a, it's not cumbersome. And God, I love I just love find find is so fun. Um, well, and also change, find and replace. Is that what you're saying? I, find well, well, you find if because you, you, so you don't always want to replace them, so you don't want to do. I do that on. I didn't mention this on the formatting. I'm old enough. <laughs> 
I know I don't look it, but I am old enough to have learned typing when you put two spaces between mm -hmm. sentences. Mm -hmm. So my fingers sometimes do that. They're, they're getting better. The last couple of years have been better. But when that rule, when I first learned that rule in writing, I could not make my fingers not automatically because I type about 70 words a minute mm -hmm. and it was doing what I was doing without me going. And now you put a space. It just is doing it automatically. So I learned that to do it I, instead of freaking out about it as I go, I would do a find and replace find. And you put one space in it. And in the replace section, you put two or no, find the two, two spaces and put one and it makes all the changes across your whole document. Boom, you're done. So that is really important for those kind of things. But for something that you might want, I can't replace all IT apostrophe S's with right. ITS because it might it need, might be wrong. it yeah. might be and it is. So I use the find to just check and then, cause you can just hit a button, go to the next one, go to the next one, go to the next one. Oh, that one needs to be changed, change it quickly. Go to the next one, go to the next one. It's easy. It's an easy process. Okay, so number, 12 on the on the overall list, number five today, is tenses, being okay. careful to, to watch for flipping tenses. Now, this is a- Watch your flipping tenses. Watch your fli flipping tenses. We should, we should do one on that just because we, that'd be a great title. Yeah. That'd be just watch awesome your flipping tensile. <laughs> tensile. Okay. We only ever drink water and iced tea. I don't know why we can't speak. Um, it is so easy, especially if you were not sure at the beginning- what tense you were going to write in. Mm -hmm. So you may have started it in the past tense and then you think, no, it, it has more action and kind of drive if I write it in the present, but you've written part of it in the past and you have to change it to the present. And mm -hmm. it, that gets a little bit difficult. Um, the way that you can at least catch a lot of them, because really that's a line by line, making sure that you've well, and I think if you if it is a, if you know that this is a problem that you have, that's when you need to address it. Yeah, but not everybody has that problem. No, so. but but it's a, but there's some there's there's a trick. Even though again, we it, you do have to look at all your verbs to make sure that they are in the, whatever tense you've chosen. But there's but there's kind of a I don't know if it's a cheat, but you'll catch a million of them if you do this you check for versions of um, the common tenses to make that you, that to see whether or not you're in a paragraph or in a sentence in the wrong. Cause you, cause not many people flip in one sentence. I mean, some people do, but for the most part, a paragraph will go, you know, you're in the present tense and a paragraph will go into the past tense and then you'll go back to mm -hmm. present tense. So if you check for the more common tenses and what I mean by that is was, saw, looked, heard, cried, tried, walked, held, things that are happening in mm -hmm. your, and you, you can pull them out of your own, what, what your, what your uh, characters are doing. Okay. Pick out some of those and search for them and see, are they in the right tense? And if they are in the wrong tense, take a little look at that paragraph. And if you find that whole paragraph, wrong tense, take a look at the paragraph before and after. And then you might have to go through the whole chapter, but sometimes it really is only a sentence or well, it is only a par paragraph. What I've seen is common is you're writing and then the person's inner thoughts. And then, you know, you've yeah. got a couple sentences of the inner thoughts that are in the wrong tense. Yeah. Yes. So, so that's why, that's why if you're looking for those, those keywords, you know, is and was and, and sees and look at the actions and things that'll just cue you in to where, where maybe you have a tense issue that you then need to look mm -hmm. in the whole paragraph. And if you know that, that you are in the present tense was is almost never going to be there. So was is a great word to, to look for and then look around it to see mm -hmm. if you've kind of slipped. Um, but it, that is a little bit more whole manuscript. Um, the next one I'm going to call the character avalanche. Uh oh, And I have to say you you were an exception. I read, well, no, it wasn't, it, no, that, not true. I was going to say one of the first chapters I ever read from Jane's work was a scene in which it was a party and there was a million characters and she did a brilliant job of define. Yeah, it was, it was, it was impressive of, I got everybody's personality in their dialogue, in their, in the physical descriptions. I knew who everybody was. I didn't lose track. You did a great job of covering a lot of people. And the reason I said that that doesn't really apply is because that wasn't your first chapter. No. So 
the character avalanche is in the first chapter. So again, we're not looking at the whole manuscript, but if you bring people in to your world, and remember you're building a world, no matter if you're doing it, you know, outer space or, or just, you know, Narnia or wherever, or just, you know, downtown, a sub, yeah, suburb, you know, yeah, suburb of Sacramento, um, you're building a world. Mm -hmm. So your reader is taking in a lot of information at once. So if you introduce 30 characters in the first chapter, you're yeah. like, uh, and, uh, and I've uh, read books like that where there's so many characters introduced in the first couple of chapters that I keep having to go back to remind myself who, who was that again? Yeah. I've had to take notes when I've had to read a book that I had no choice because it was for school or something. I've had to take notes. If your reader has to take notes yeah, that's not good. on characters, then you may have one too many characters. <laughs> you might be a redneck if, yeah. you know, you might be a character uh, avalanche, avalanche purse person. Um, but definitely not in the first, you want to throw us into the story. So just edit to the, the only, the most important characters, but keep the spotlight on who you need to be there. Don't try to go to a party where you have to remember. And, and because again, we don't know who's important mm -hmm. in where, where that scene in your book falls. We're all even though we're getting introduced to a lot of characters, we know the framework mm -hmm. already. So we know they're somebody's father or something. And so we can put them in the right place in our mind. But in the beginning of a story, we don't know who's important. So everybody gets equal brain space and that can, be, can become overwhelming. So character avalanche. Okay. The last one is, and this is a difficult one. So yes, now we're going to have to, you know, and I've got to read through my manuscript five times. No, actually you don't need to because 99% of your dialogue tags should be said. So you can do a search for dialogue. Oh. So there's going to be, okay. a, if you're having a dialogue exchange at least one time in it, it should say said, somebody should said, so don't do guffawed and, you know, ejaculated and vomited. <laughs> and no, I mean, I've read that in the last, and I've read that in the last week. Somebody was he like growled. Yeah. Every, it's like, they can't just say he said, she said, or whatever. Well, they have to it, make it this. It also um, weakens your dialogue because you're not, you're not saying in the words that the character is saying. Exactly. The emotion you're having to describe the emotion in the dialogue. Tag. Yeah. And the, and the, and the funny thing is, is here, that's a verb he said, right? So on the one hand, we're just telling you make strong verbs in other places. But if you apply that to dialogue, what you're doing is drawing all the attention to the dialogue tag and not the dialogue. Not the dialogue. So yeah. what you want is that to be just a nuance, just to let you know who's speaking. You don't want it to and do you don't any distracting. Tag after every single no. piece of dialogue. You don't. Um, but all those fancy words, growled and you know, hissed and all those things, for the most part, they're not going to be needed. Right. But said should be in there somewhere even if somebody growls and somebody does some other things someone's going to just said mm -hmm. so you could do a search on said and getting that and, and read it and that those are the things that i have other people read both aloud and to themselves mm -hmm. and i say tell me tell me what you what you think of of does it sound natural tell me what you think the personality is of the one person and the other because if you don't have a distinct voice for every character in dialogue then and it's weak and it needs work. And this is where uh, listening to audible books is, is uh, yeah. really helpful because typically in an audible book, they're going to use a different voice for each yeah. character. And they're not going to say, you know, you, blah, 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 blah. he said, you're going to know who it is by their intonation, yeah. by their, exactly. by how they speak, which um, will help you in your, actual physical writing. Exactly. And dialogue is, is tough. There's a million resources, how to write good dialogue, you know, do a Google search on it and you'll, there'll be hundreds of, of great resources for you to look at. But that's important because if you have the greatest story ever, but you have to have dialogue mm -hmm. in creative nonfiction, you have to have it in fiction. So if, if that's a, and it should be a significant portion of your mm -hmm. writing, not, you know, not the whole thing in dialogue, but it should be a pretty lot. There should be dialogue in every scene. Mm -hmm. So if you can't get that right and it's stilted and it's awkward, then you got a problem. So yeah. look, do a search for said and have those be the ones that you read aloud, have somebody else read aloud and have somebody else just read and get feedback on, am I in the right zone? Am I writing it in the voice of my character? 
Does it sound like, would you like to go to the park? He said, why, thank you, John, for that invitation. I shall go with you now. She, she said. said, you know, if it if it's awkward and dialogue again is hard, then that's an area that it's self editing. But it's it's a point where you say, okay, if I've got a problem with this throughout my my book, it, it needs to be fixed before you submit it. So that's where you put a pause. You go do some some go craft. Gra grab a book on craft. Yep, yeah, and you and you work on that and work on it until you've got that right. So, right. so those are 14 different self editing wow. tips. You've made me feel so much better about editing. Well, thank you again. Most of it is God bless the search facility and find, because that is, is part of how you short kind of do a shortcut to the changes that you need to make. You're not reading every single word of those 85,000 words or whatever, 20 times. You're not, you're looking for specific things. And if you know what you're looking for, it's going to be a lot easier. Okay. So there you go. Self-editing. This is the end of part two. If you didn't catch part one, do that. I am Robin Miller, and you've been listening to The Art of Semi-Fiction. And I'm Jane Daly, and thank you for listening. Don't forget to like us, subscribe, and leave a review. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye.